Hello and welcome to episode 14. In this video we are going to take a look at how we can turn the tree into a vine. So I'm going to start off by dragging in the new instance here and turn it so it points upwards. And I'm going to give it a few more se um, segments to work with. Let's also give it a yaw of 30 degrees. And the thing is as you will see here, it's not really looking balanced. So what I want them to do here is really to spread out more evenly. So what I'm going to do is to add a boolean that allows us to alternate the direction it's going to point out to. So let's do that. Let me pull it up here under the yaw, like here. Um, so the thing is, with the yaw, uh, the yaw is the 30 degrees we just gave it. So I want this value to alternate, but I don't want to change this variable here. So I'm going to make a temporary variable called um, current. Um, Actually, no, let me just think for a moment. We don't want this to be here. We want it to be a local variable, so I'm not going to create it here because I want them to alternate, but I want them to alternate locally um, within each branch. So I'm going to create a new one here called local a current your is going to be a float and when we generate the branch we want to initialize it with something so i'm going to give it a new parameter here called uh, yaw which is going to be a float and then when i call it i want to give it my yaw here like that so initially it's going to come in with that 30 and when I then come in here, I'm going to set local set this one. And as you can see, I already prepared some space for it by inserting an empty sequence here. So with this current yaw here, I only want to, I, I need to do something here because right now we add the yaw and we want to add the current local current yaw here instead. Um, and depending on whether this is set or not, then we want to either use just the raw value here, or we might want to use um, the the negative the um, alternate version or with the opposite sign so we can do do that by typing select float and if this is true then we're going to alternate it and if it's false then we're just going to use the normal one and then we're going to set this local variable. So we'll connect that one up. And those. And actually, we just connect this one up. OK. And then when we call it in, in here, when we generate a new branch, then we just need to hook it up with the local current job. And I believe that should be it. So if we now, where did I put it? I did not expose it. So if I alternate y'all, then we get them in each. First one going this way and second one going that way. And 
then it's gonna start over. So it's constantly gonna alternate. Um, so one other thing I'm gonna add to this is a way to limit how many sub branches we're gonna get because right now we're constantly getting new branches or uh, using the old logic. So I'm gonna introduce also another variable called max branches, which is gonna allow us to say how many sub branches do we wanna create max. Wow, max branches is good enough. So I'm gonna drag that up to maybe here. And that's gonna be an integer. And I guess we can also just add this as a parameter here. So the first one, first time we call it, um, yeah, well, here's the thing. If we set this to zero or negative, then I wanted to interpret it as using the, the, the same logic as we have now. But if I set it to like one, then I only want it to grow one branch and from now on not grow any more branches. So I need some way of keeping track of what branch level we are at. So I need to expand my tree branch structure to be holding, or well, actually I don't need to do that. I could in case I need it in, in the generate uh, render tree. But for now, let's just actually go with a variable here, a parameter here. So I, I, I'm just going to continue. Sorry about that. Um, so let's call this um, branch level. And let's promote that to a local variable. Local branch level, and we can set that here. And we also need to plug it in towards the end. Where is it here? So when we call the next branch, then what we want to do is to add one to this, and that's going to tell the logic that it's now working on branch two. And then the place where we say, do we want to grow a new or generate a new branch? I'm going to add another criteria to this saying, if the local branch level is uh, less than, um, less than or equal to that max branches, then we want to grow a branch and once it grows above that, we don't want to grow any more branches. But as I said, if this is zero or minus one, then we want to just do it anyway, according to the rest of the logic here. So I'm going to do that by using another select here. So I'm going to, going to drag this one out here and say select int. And we need to say if max branches is less than or equal or actually greater than zero, then we want to use this one. Otherwise, we're going to use like an insanely high number of branches, so like 500. So that basically means it's going to branch. This is going to be true all the time. So if we compile that, and now set this to, where did I put it here? Set this to one. Mm. We need to initialize this with something. I forgot to do that. So generate tree. We should initialize it with zero right now for default. So I'm just going to say this first one is range level one. And then we get this. So now we can say we only want, we want still to 
grow a new branch every uh, two segment but from there on we don't want to grow any more branches so that's what this is probably is, is doing for us um, and in order to control how long each of these get we can also add this Let, let's do that we have time for that um, let's call this max range length yeah okay mm -hmm. and that is also going to be under the branch section and the way we're going to do this is this for loop here tells us how many um, segments that we should spawn and normally that's going to be decreased by the decrease segments at branch up here but what we have here is that we want to be able to set this to for example if I compile this I want to be able to set this to let's say 3, 4 maybe and then each of these should only grow out four, but the main branch should still grow to the maximum. So since I now know that my main branch has an index a branch level of one, what I can do is to say is select int, and if my local branch level is equal to zero then I just want to use this local local segments per branch but if it's not zero then it means that it, um, actually if it's equal to one um, but if it's not equal to one then it's going to be two or higher. Then I want to take a look at if I have a max branch length select uh, set. So I want to get that, and here we also need a select. Or we can do it using the select. We can do it in a number of ways, I guess. And we're going to hook that in here. And actually, we can take this part here and move over here. So I just need to get the straight in, in my head. So let's see, max branch length. We want to use the max branch length if this is set, if this is greater than zero. If it's less than zero, I guess then we just want to use the local. Yeah, and then we're just going to use the local segments per branch. I suppose this is correct. Let's just compile it and save it and see what we get. Hooray! Success. So now I can safely set this to like. 14 and it's going to grow out and keep growing out like that and that allows us to do things like this where I, we can for example make this hmm, I don't know how far we can take this something like this maybe and yeah, we have a few issues I haven't tackled yet. One of them can you can see here. 
is the the spline is doing something weird with the rotation because of the I think it's because of the missing roll and I'm not seeing the up direction. We can take a quick look at it uh, before I end this video. But what I want to do here before I do anything more is to add a little bit of randomization, just a tiny bit. That way, you get something like this. And adding, let's say, 0.2 this now we can get kind of a wrapping thing and depending on how you set up your, your leaves and so on you can get something looking pretty nice so yeah let's take a look let's just take the the leaves off again um, we have another issue. I will tackle that in one of the next videos. But as you can see, if I turn down the randomization again, um, you can see it's kind of sticking, like uh, popping into the into the surface here, and that's actually because we always right now trace both forward and down. So we'll trace forward and we'll also trace down. I and mean, we don't always want to do that. And yeah, I'm going to take a look at it in the next video. But for now, I'm going to just briefly see if I can sort out um, some of the issues we have here and see if uh, I can fix that just by doing a little thing. It's not a complete solution. I can already reveal, but I still need to sort out the math behind this in my head, and it's not really easy for me to get. Um, inside the render tree, we are currently setting the start and end tan uh, position and tangent, but we're not setting the up vector, so it doesn't really know which way it's rotating. So in order to do that, I'm going to set the up vector here. And we have the up vector actually from the rotation. Since I just threw away the rotation using this caster vector array to a vector array, I kind of need to reacquire some of the information here. So I'm going to promote this to a local variable and just set here place that one and call this local transforms okay and we have access to the local segment index so we can move all the way over here and then we can say drag out from this one the local spline mesh and say set up spline up direction. You see this is taking in a uh, up direction vector. And remember to untick this one. In order to get that, we can drag out our reference to our array and say get. And the one we want to get is the one at the segment index. And we can split this up and we have the rotation here and from this one we can get the up vector. And plug that in here. So compile and save and see what that did. So in this case actually it didn't fix it. So I was, I was kind of hoping it would just magically do it for me but um no but you will see sometimes it's doing some twisting if we turn this off maybe i can illustrate this yeah um, that's what i meant to do so actually you can see one of them here 
you're gonna get these kind of sausage endings things uh, now and then if you don't do something with the up vector so if I set, drag this over again so now we're setting the up vector then you can see it gets rid of this little squeezed together part here but it's unfortunately not all uh, but that's something we can take a look at uh, in also in, in one of the next videos because yeah as mentioned I still need to get my head straight about this okay but so now we have a little fishbone vine here but as you saw you we can create some kind of interesting um, what do you call it? Um, vine looking things uh, using some of these settings here oh yeah and as a consequence of us setting now the up vector we are getting some weirdness here now but that's something we will take a look at later for now i'm just going to ignore it i know it is a problem um, so i can actually go down to like minus five and five and we don't see it that much but that's not really a a, a real solution actually if i only i can't remember which one not that one apparently I think it may be the yeah it's gotta be this one yep so if I don't roll around the x-axis uh, randomly now but only do it on the y and the c then things look a little bit better okay, well we still have a little bit of something here I wonder what will happen if we give this like something crazy like minus 40 and 40 whoa and we get weirdness <laughs> and even more weirdness okay this needs some more work okay, let's not do that then so let's stick to the minus 5 and 5 what happens if I give this minus 40 here? What? Hmm. Hmm. Okay, I guess oof, you need to be a little bit careful with what you said here. Otherwise, you're going to get some kind of unpredictable results. And actually, with this setup here, I have 23 minutes on the time. I can squeeze this in just quickly here. What I'm going to do here, because I think these leaves are way too big. So I'm going to just quickly add a leaf multiplier um, and the the reason why I want to do this I want to make this a float of course and I want to give this some kind of a uh, meaningful two i think i used so if you remember from when i set up the leaves uh the generate or uh, the render tree has the leaves and i have a multiplier of two here so i'm gonna plot that in here and actually i also have an offset leaf size um <clears throat> Can call this leaf size minimum i don't really like to have too many of these because it's going to become quite confusing what they do 
So I think I'm just, for now I'm just going to leave it here. And we have it set to two now. So uh, no, I think we set it now to zero. Or we have leaves. No, it's two. So I can set this to one, and it's going to generate some way smaller leaves. So that way you can control a little bit better how it looks. And leave spawn limit. Set this to zero point one. That was a bit too high. So I don't get anyone. 0 0.05 so this setting I'm fiddling with is how thin if you remember how thin I allow these to be I just noticed that some of them when they spawn all the way out here um, they look kind of weird and this one seems to be a little bit off but yeah I guess that's because I didn't pl place it completely where in the center or something So 0 0.1 maybe, 0 0.08. Well, anyway, that's something you can tweak a little bit yourself. So it look, seems to be looking pretty good now. That way you can generate nice stuff here. And the cool thing is now that we have all these uh, extra knobs here to turn on, uh, we can actually allow some way longer values here so we can grow some nice random stuff here so i'm yeah i think it's a pretty good start even with the uh, with the tree leaves here should definitely grab something looking a little bit better and also switch out the the tree bark stuff here with something more looking like a vine or something so anyway thank you for watching and See you in the next. Bye-bye.